In this video, we're looking at the following question, which comes from textbook by Dixon and Omani. You can see here that they've got in an economy, we have all of these factors. So savings equals 50, government equals 30, net exports is zero, consumption is 40, investment is 15, and our MPC is 0 0.8. Okay, these are all very useful figures to note. Now, if the government wanted to increase national income by $25 million, by how much would it have to boost government spending? Okay, so let's start by putting together our formulas. So we know that if we wanted to look at national income, we know that a change in income equals the multiplier times the change in aggregate demand. Now we can see from this question that the government wants to increase national income by $25 million. Okay, so then we're going to still need to know about the multiplier, but the times here is the change in government spending. Can you see here? Boost government spending. So that is our measure of aggregate demand. So now we need to think about, okay, we need to find our mystery part here, which is K. So we know that K equals 1 on MPS. This is why it's really good to always put down our formulas. We also know that MPS plus MPC equals 1. So if we come back over here and we say, okay, MPC equals 0.8, so this must mean that our marginal propensity to save equals 0 0.2. So here I've got K will equal 1 on 0 0.2. So K will equal 5. So therefore, if I go back here, now I know that 25 will equal 5, our value of K, which comes up to here times the change in G. This is very basic uh, mathematics here. So therefore, G will have to equal $5 million, right? And that is our answer to this particular question. Okay, this next multiplier question is from the 2013 HSC, and it was question 15 in that year. Okay, so again, we're going to go through the question and then you can pause the video, try it yourself, and then come back for the explanation to test yourself. Okay, question says there is a decline in the marginal propensity to consume. Okay, so there is a decline in MPC. What combinations of changes in the simple multiplier simple multiplier being K and equilibrium income, equilibrium income being Y, is most likely to result. Okay, if we're thinking about the key formulas, so let's think about it. Okay, so I know that the multiplier equals 1 on 1 minus MPC. Okay, and I also know that the change in equilibrium income equals the multiplier times the change in the component of aggregate demand. So these are the two things that are going to be very helpful for us. Now, I sometimes have a bit of trouble looking at what the theory is or trying to understand the theory without using numbers. So what if we used actual numbers? So let's say that in the first situation that MPC used to be 0.6 and then now MPC will equal 0 0.3. Okay, so we're just using numbers to try and understand what's going on. So if MPC equals 6, 6, sorry, then K is going to equal 1 over 1 minus 0.6, which is going to give us 1 on 0.4, which will equal 2.5. If we then look at MPC equals 0.3, okay, so K equals 
1 over 1 minus MPC, which is 0 0.7, which is equal to approximately 1.42. Okay, so we know now that if we can draw over here, we know now that if we get a decline in MPC, then we're going to see a decline in the power of the multiplier, which kind of makes sense because if more people are saving, then there's going to be less spending and injections in the economy. Now, let's look at, so with the simple multiplier, we know that it decreases. So we can say, you're not possible, and we can say, okay, you're not possible either. So I've got between B and C. Now, let's look at our second formula. So if I've got a change in income will equal K times the change in AD. Now, if I see a decline in the multiplier, then there will be a lower number that is multiplying that change in aggregate demand. So the whole change in income will fall. So therefore, the simple multiplier will decrease, yes, but equilibrium income, equilibrium income is also going to decrease. So our answer here is B.